Okay, so let's have a look at another example. This time we've got a diphenyl group on one side and dimethyl group on the other. So let's have a look if we see what happens if we just move the electrons on on this side here. Pick up a proton like we did before. We create a, a good leaving group, water. So what happens now? So we got this and lose water to make carbonium ion. There's nothing different there to what we did before. Nice stable tertiary carbonium ion. Okay. And now if we uh, do the rearrangement, we'll get the phenyl group on one side and get a, a, a benzophenone type of compound. That's great. That works well. The mechanism looks good. But there's just one thing that's wrong about this mechanism. So I just want to um, highlight a few points basically about uh, stabilization of these carbonium ions. So we'll just protonate on the other side. And we'll just draw this quickly. Now we've got uh, water as a leaving group on this side. There's nothing different mechanistically so far until we look at the intermediate that we form by taking water off that side. Now if you look at this, we've got a carbonium ion now, but it's stabilized by these these phenyl groups here. Now phenyl groups, as you know, have got a delocalized electron ring system in the benzene ring. So let's have a look at that in a little bit more detail. So there's the benzene ring. And how can that stabilize a carbonium ion? Well, it forms these intermediates, and these intermediates are actually called uh, Welland intermediates, or resonance forms, sorry. And that, that positive charge circulates around the benzene ring, just like the electrons circulate around. So it's incredibly more stable than just having an electron density pumped into it from the methyl groups. So the actual product from this reaction is the acetyl group as drawn here rather than the benzoyl product that we had before. So keep your eye out for those um, phenyl groups and that's it for now. Bye bye.